February is Black History Month, and Delmarva is a big part of that history, especially in Dorchester County. Oh, yeah, and of course, that is the birthplace of Harriet Tubman, but it's also where a once thriving African American community called Indian Town is located. And today, all that's left of that community are the fields that sharecroppers once worked during the mid 20th century and one very old house called Hansel. The earliest records of Hansel date back to 1655. Literally in, in Middle English, it means earnest money or the first money handed at market. But the land around it can be traced back to the Chacon Indians. Uh, we did dendrochronology. Margaret Ingersoll is with the Nanticoke Historical Preservation Boring. Alliance. Boring. She says in 1655, a land grant was given to a Thomas Taylor. He had 700 acres right smack dab on top of the native village and he was a Native American interpreter. He took the time to learn the language of the native people and he was an interpreter, official interpreter for the Maryland colonies with the native people at Chacon. Ownership of the land was transferred to different people over the years but it's believed that a man named Henry Steele built the house here in the 1770s. This house, oddly enough, has been a sleeper. Nobody knew much about the house. It, it, it was boarded up for 70 years. In 2009, an Anacoke Historical Preservation Alliance bought the house and property surrounding it. That's when work started to unravel the mystery of Hansel. The house was actually, um, we think, a story and a half taller and another 16 feet deeper than it is now, deeper in depth. So the footprint originally was much larger and the house was taller. This is just one of the many pieces of the Hansel puzzle that was found during archaeological surveys. We found a lot of brick. Uh, obviously, it's a brick house and it's had damage to it, so there's brick everywhere around here, pottery, uh, very few Indian artifacts, and we thought there might be Indian stuff because this is, is the Chacon Indian Reservation. The damage is consistent with research that suggests the Hansel house was burned in a fire. The house partially collapsed. The, re, the front wall and two, partial two side walls remain standing. And in 1837, it was rebuilt using the ruins from the walls of the earlier house. In the 19th century, many descendants of slaves who once worked in the plantation community of Indian Town continued to farm and live near the Hansel house. But by the time sisters Shirley Jackson and Vadis Walker were growing up in the area, the Hansel house had been abandoned. It was a mystery house. <laughs> we really didn't know what to think of this house. And although they grew up several hundred feet away from the house, they had no idea they were descendants of slaves who worked here until the NHPA started their research. Had no idea that people lived here, slaves lived here, uh, and they were our ancestors. According to research, at one time, when this man, Isaac Nevitt Steele's family owned it, as many as 91 slaves were listed as living in and around Hansel something that took Shirley and Vadis by surprise. I opened in very, you know, very exciting, especially knowing someone that was related to me living here, that had lived here. As the sisters learn more and more about their old community, they're also helping to gather information about the families they grew up with on Indian Town Road. And I contact those that were still around mm -hmm. to write their to reminisce about their memories living on the Indian Town Road. Some of that more recent history was dug up during Dr. Otter's archaeological survey. A 1965 Mesa's Lane High School class ring was found in three pieces. It was inscribed with the initials GCP. Well, the P kind of was a clue to us because the Pinder family was one of the African-American families here that we have been researching and doing family genealogy on. And they live right next door here in a frame house that has long since been demolished. And so we found this ring and tracked it down to Granville C. Pinder, Jr., who graduated in 1965 from Mesa's Lane High School. Members of the NHPA say there is so much more to be discovered on this land, and their work is far from done. But their goal is pretty clear. We see this as a uh, quality small museum that's interpreting three stories simultaneously. Um, African American, uh, both slavery up into 20th century sharecropping, um, English settlement, of course, and the Native American story, of course, is all in the ground underneath us. 
And since purchasing Hansel House, an Anacoke Historical Preservation Alliance has worked to restore and preserve as much of it as possible, and that work continues today. As for that class ring that was found on the property, it will be returned to Granville Pender this weekend. And if you would like to see the ring and hear the story, show up Sunday at 1 p.m. at the Vienna Fire Hall. They're going to have refreshments being served. And of course, for more information about the Hansel House and an Anacoke Historical Preservation Alliance, go to our website, WBOC.com click on our picture at the top of the page.